Warning. The following program is rated TVPG. Parental guidance is suggested. And you probably won't see any boobs. <laughs> Greetings, people of the future. On this day of your year, we decided to open up the vault and dig out another time capsule from the raw and puckered annals of our cinema insomnia history. We now present to you, for educational purposes only, a classic episode from our library, reconstructed with the best elements known to TV science. Enjoy. You are under my power. Look into the hypnotic eye. Time now to enter Mr. Lobo's domain. Look out! Open your mind to the possibility that they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. You're not dreaming. You're watching Cinema Insomnia. Tonight's feature is presented in Nozovision. They work a lot like a scientist's microscope, only for your nostrils. Simply pick up a pair at the uh, participating 99 cent store or uh, dial one up on cinemainsomnia.com and there you will find how to prepare your set of Nozovision nososcopic slides. Like uh, you just put a little bit of mom's perfume on slide A, put a little sulfur on slide B, a little bit of uh, uh, dad shaving cream on slide C, and so on. Keep them in these plastic bags alphabetized and await instructions during the film. I'm going to put in the dad shaving cream. Dads, what's wrong with you? Anyway. Uh, so that's how these work, and if, if your parents are a little financially challenged and you can't afford a set of Mr. Lobo's nososcopic glasses, I understand. Just take a popsicle stick or uh, anything around the house, a fork, rub something that smells on it, and hold it under your nose during the appropriate parts. Let's, let's try another one, shall we? Uh, this one's baby food. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Butternut squash and corn. I'm your horror host, Mr. Lobo. There are still regions of the world, vast and desolate, where no life is ever seen. Modesto, for example. It is though the land itself was spanked by a Hot Wheels track and shoved into a closet by God. It is in these lonely, desolate areas that unspeakable, unnamed creatures still lurk beneath the Earth's crust. It is in these dark, impenetrable forests and dark shadows that still inhabit the giant Gila monster. Excuse me. Come on, giant Gila monster? I mean, slob zombie on least access cable can show giant Gila monster. Read the card. Queen of Trash uh, politely informs me that the uh, Nososcopics Laboratory had a bit of a mix up, and we got the uh, Nosovision slides for a completely different movie. Uh, so rather than waste the Nosovision Nososcopic slides, we're going to bring you that movie instead. But I promise you, Mr. Lobo will be bringing you Giant Gila Monster at a later date. Thank you, my queen. <laughs> like it matters. Ah, without further ado, Wannabe Rockabilly Idol, Arch Hall, co-stars from a safe distance 
as the towering seven foot two inch character actor and James Bond villain Richard Jaws Keel does for cavemen what Ringo Starr did for cavemen. So we drag our knuckles through tonight's feature, Ega. Well, you still are. I just bought myself new swimming suit tonight. Oh? Yes. See? That? <laughs> well, I got off work in ten minutes. Follow me out then. Follow you? Listen, I can change clothes and beat you out there. <laughs> That's my girl. Her father's Robert I. Miller. Writes all those adventure books. You ought to see her swim. Hey! Gee, I sure am sorry, sir. I guess I was thinking about having dinner with my girl. She lives up at the club.
watch Roxy swim, okay? I didn't. I found this box, okay? And when I opened it, there was nothing in it but bacon-flavored dental floss. Bacon-flavored dental floss. Oh, gee, I'm sure am sorry, Miss Mittens. Sorry about that. Uh, look, uh, we should probably toss the break now while Mr. Lobo contemplates a few things. Cinema Insomnia will be right back. <laughs> and important events in every young girl's life. Her first sincere kiss. I don't want my girl messing around with those creeps. Her first grown-up giving of love. Her joining of a secret society. <laughs> what a hellcat she's going to make. Did you ever steal? No. You learn. On the Connie Harris case, you asked me to call. Well, I'm afraid there may be trouble. There's the devil to pay when high school Hellcats and high school hotshots get together on an anything goes party. Tonight's feature contains cliched characters, annoying songs, exploited tallness, and nepotism, and truly dares you to stay awake. Mr. Lobo is going to have to ask you all, as I have in the past, to take the insomniac's oath. Please assume the position and repeat after Mr. Lobo. I, as initiated member of the Sleepless Nights of Insomnia, do solemnly swear to watch the movie the whole movie, and nothing but the movie. So help me, Mr. Lobo. You may stand down. Ah, God, it hurts more every time. And now back to the nososcopic edition of Light's Feature, Ega. It's me, Tom. Oh, 
Tommy! No matter what happened. Oh, is he gone? Who? Is he? Don't say anybody. Just take it easy and tell me what happened. I saw a giant. What? Well, I did. Honest, I saw a giant. He doesn't believe me. You didn't really expect anyone to, did you, Miss Millet? Why not? It's the truth. Honey, a uh, prehistoric monster is a rather large order to swallow. Dad, I didn't say he was a monster. He was a giant. You know, a caveman. Club and all, eh? Yes. What my daughter saw, she saw. Now, let's just let it go at that. Okay. But if you see her giant again, let me know in time to take some pictures. She will. <laughs> Dad, you don't believe me either. Roxy, of course I believe you. I believe you saw something. Well, I saw a giant. A prehistoric giant. How about it, Tom? What'd you see? Like I told you, Mr. Miller, I wasn't there until afterwards. Tommy Nelson, I know what I saw. Sure, Roxy, but I mean giants. There were giants. The Bible says so. Yes, it does. In, in the book of Genesis. Something about in those days, giants walked the earth. Well, then. Maybe we can get some flashlights and go out and take a look for ourselves. Huh? No, this thing can wait until morning. Now, you kids go and take your swim before the pool closes. In the morning now. It's a promise. Dad still doesn't believe me. Sure he does. And neither do you. I swear on my Elvis Presley LP. How big did you say he was? Oh, bigger than anybody you ever saw. I bet you were scared, huh? A little. But I had the funniest feeling he wouldn't hurt me. Yeah? In fact, I thought it was kind of cute. Oh! Mm. said yourself that you think. Isn't it possible that you dreamed this whole idea? No, Dad, I didn't. There was a giant. Now, I don't want to call this story of yours a lot of foolishness, and I haven't so far, have I? No. But if there were a giant, if anyone at all Mr. had Miller, been here... come here. What'd you find? I don't know. It sure looks like a footprint, though. Well, let me see. Yes, look, there's the heel. Look at the size of that. It must have been made by a Say it. A giant. What did I tell you? And that's for finding it. Well, I'll find the big boy himself for it if you feel like that. He left the road right here. Watch out for snakes. Ooh. Better go back to the car. No, he's my giant. Holy cow, he was standing right here watching us. And then he turned and took off her. Shadow Mountain. Do you suppose that's where he lives? It's possible. That would account for his never having been seen before. 
It's too bad we didn't bring the doom buggy. We'd go after him. What for? I to get some pictures. Maybe even to bring him back. A lot of people aren't going to believe this giant jazz. No, we're not sending about this, you understand? Why not? After the way everyone laughed at me. Your turn will come. I'm going up on Shadow Mountain with a camera. Are you going to write a book about the giant, Mr. Miller? That's the idea, Tom. I'll take you up there. My doom buggy's all ready to go. No, thanks. It is. I just gave it the works. There's no offense, son. But I'd like to take this trip in something a little bit safer. credit cards are in the desk drawer. You make sure you leave them there. This thing's supposed to be safer than my dune buggy? All right, Kruger, let's go. Mr. Lobo is going to show you now how to prepare your nose vision glasses. Now, we've got some blank slides here, and an easy one to do is slide M, I mean R, excuse me. You put a little bit of uh, your mom's perfume on there and slip it into your nose of vision glasses and <sighs> Lady Speed Stick. Mm, that's Roxy smell. Uh, the next one we're going to do is uh, quite simple, a little bit of Brill Cream. This is for slide H. A little dabble, do you? Some brill cream, some bubblicious bubble gum, and uh, a little bit of gasoline. Maybe my mom or dad help you with that. Okay. And uh, that's the smell of Arch Hall Jr. Oh, yeah, that's what he smells like. That's exactly what he smells like. <laughs> okay, the next one is slide, I'm not going to be able to put that back in my mouth. Okay, the next one is uh, slide uh, M, which uh, is a, a pretty easy one to do. You get a little bit of um, old spice, old cigarettes, old money. And that's the smell of Mr. Miller, a.k.a. William Waters, a.k.a. Arch Hall Sr., Yeah, God, it smells like old back issues of Argosy. Okay. Now, for the last one, for slide S, well, that's sweat. And uh, the easiest way to do this, and I can do two at once, and Mr. Lobo's doubly lucky because I'm male and one of the ethnic races, which means I produce more sweat than anyone else. But you put uh, one under each armpit. Now, that's science. Don't write letters. One under each armpit and just let it seep during tonight's commercial break. Have you been injured in a skateboard or skateboard related accident? Do you need a lawyer? I'm not a poser. I'm a hardcore skate punk like you. And I know the law. This is actually my skateboard. Pretty tight, huh? Brad is like totally cool. I fell down in front of the courthouse, he got my medical expenses paid, and he got me a bag. That's right, I'll even get you a bag. I'm not here to judge you, that's the court's job. I'm a hardcore skate punk like you. And I know the law. And more importantly, I know, I know how to help you Break it. Don't delay. Call Red Abram Dunn Associates today. Look for our ad in Thresher Magazine. Later days, dudes. One million years BC erupts on the screen with volcanic excitement. When 
primitive man and monstrous beasts fought each other to inherit the earth. Introducing the fabulous Raquel Welch, the sensational star discovery of this or any other year in one million years B.C. See her as Loana the Fair One, who deserted her tribe and risked her life to follow Tumac of the Rock People. See the fascinating, strange and fearful creatures who roamed and ruled the Earth a million years B.C. Introducing the fabulous Raquel Welch as Loana the Fair One. John Richardson as Tumac. Look, Mr. Lobo is not having this argument with you, Miss Mittens. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Look, giants are real, okay? I swear on my Arch Hall LP. Because they were real. Look, it says so in the Bible and the Quran and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Look, open your mind. Here it is. Giant, a humanoid-shaped creature of great strength and size. Six core types of giants are known to exist. Storm giants live mainly on cloud islands, usually chaotic good. Uh, cloud giants believe they are superior to all other giants except for storm giants, usually neutral good or neutral evil. Fire giants are militaristic and look somewhat like a huge dwarf, usually lawful evil. Stone giants are shy, but nevertheless dangerous when aroused to anger, usually neutral. And uh, let's see here, there's a uh, different type. Oh! Ah! Don't you forget, I want you to meet me at the mouth of Deep Canyon tomorrow at 4.
last day we met was my last day with you. Just one of those things. Just a minute, please. Do you know where Deep Canyon is? Yeah. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I've been there lots of times. Why? Don't worry, Mr. Kruger. I'll take care of it. Yes. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. What's up? That was Mr. Kruger from the airport. The helicopter blew a gasket or something. He won't be able to pick Dad up. At Deep Canyon? Yes. No problem. We'll get the dune buggy and we'll whiz right out there. This is whizzing? Wait till we get off the highway. Take it easy 
in that water. Well, I don't want it to dry out before Dad gets here. And don't you eat anymore. Okay. It's 9 o'clock. What do you suppose happened? Oh, nothing happened. He's not coming on a bus, you know. You can't expect him to be right on the dot. I know, but he should have made it for dark. Don't worry about it. He'll see the campfire and come walking in on us any minute now. That's what you said two hours ago. Well, he will. Well, if you believe that, what's the idea of the bedrolls? Look, I carry all this junk in the buggy anyway, so you might as well get some use out I'm of it. I'm not sleepy. So just lie down, take a rest for a while. I'll keep the fire going. Hey, what are you doing with that? I always carry a gun in the desert. There's coyotes around a camp. Put it away. We're not playing cowboy. You know, there's mountain lions around here, too. Well, they won't come near a fire, I know that much. And I'm not going to have you take a shot at something that turns out to be dead. Okay, okay. I'll put it away in one condition that you crawl in and get some rest. Okay. our entire world hostage with his music. Frank Tail Records presents The One, the only Ambassador Phantom on one long playing album, Candles, Crank Horn, and You. Oh yeah, come on over here. On Planet Crank 4, he sold more records than oh, Harry Como, yeah. Boxcar Willie, Jerry Vale, Red So Vine, Slim Whitman, and Zam Fear combined. Unforgettable. Finally, through this exclusive TV offer, Lost Youth can once again be yours on LP, 8-track tape, or Cosmic Spoof for only nine payments of $9.99 plus $99 shipping and paper. Caustic papers. Keep blowing in. And if you Brother. order now, we'll send you this free bonus disc. Ambassador Phantom of Crankhorn narrates Peter and the Wolf. Peter looked up and shouted, Where is that miserable skunk? I'll make mince meat out of him. Hurry, operators are standing by. Order candles, crank whore, and you today, or... We're gonna kill some children. Yuck. <laughs> Creepy crawlers. Thing maker 2. In about an hour, you can make lots of things that look awful and feel terrible. Creepy crawlers. Preheat the goop. Pour in the molds and wait. <laughs> Yuck. Creepy Crawler, Thing Maker 2, an electrical toy. It's disgusting. Creepy Crawler, Thing Maker 2, comes with three molds and four bottles of goop. New from a tap. Is there anyone out there? Yeah. Mr. Lobo is in terrible danger. I'm being held hostage by a female caveman. She already used her club and smashed Miss Mittens into bits. And, 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 and my companion and bodyguard, Miss oh. Mittens, uh, she got queen of trash. She's nowhere to be found. She, she's even eaten all of my nososcopic slides. <laughs> Call an anthropologist, hurry. Well, I have one on my speed dial. Oh, gosh, she got... Police, fire, oh. ambulance, botanist, toy store, anthropologist. Oh, no. She's, uh, 
I won't tell you what she's doing to my phone, but it's not on broadcast anyway, but... Oh no, she's coming this way. Oh, run for your lives! <laughs> Touch it. Well, I sure didn't. And look at... What'd you do that for? Listen, if he comes back for that club, we'd want to be anywhere around here. Sure it is. Well, I borrowed it enough. Look at where it's smashed. Well, he could have dropped it. Well, then why didn't he pick it up? Well, it's broken. It's no good to him. Oh, well, it's also insured. Let's not kid ourselves. Well, let's not jump to conclusions either. Come on, let's try that next ravine. Climb up their ways and see if the buggy can get through. No, you better stay here. No. There's no use in both of us going. We gotta come back for the buggy anyway. Well, then we'll come back. I'm not going to sit here doing nothing. Oh, women. Look, you stay here with the buggy. Nope. And drive it up to meet me when I give you the signal. That'll save us both a trip. Come on. Well, okay. Ah, okay. Oh, the gun. Toss it. Give me a blast in that horn if you see anything. Don't worry about that.
day one, Mr. Lobo is still being held captive by a female cave person that I've come to know as Shiga. Shiga. She is now introducing me to her ancestors. Apparently they uh, all work at Spencer's Gifts. Cinema Insomnia will be right back. Now the kid had a cycle, a hot one in town. He called it Scrambler and raced it all around. One day a tall one came out of the blue and called to his brother, I'll race against you. Trailblazer ready. The crowd picked their man. They ripped up the cycles and the great race began. They raced them and chased them again and again. Trailblazer, Scrambler, and two daring men. These fully assembled gyro cycles are inside specially marked packages of Quisp and Quakes Quangaroos. Ratvink and Boo Boo. Masked men dedicated to fight crime and preserve justice. Look, Boo Boo, young lady in distress. Won't somebody help me? Me first, Ratvink. Go, Boo Boo. I'll park the rat sickle. Oh, take that, Mr. Crook. Oh. Why not fight someone your own size, fella? Ah. Help me. Won't somebody please help me? The rat think, Will. Hey, drop that girl. You heard me, you big ape. Take that ape. Rat Fink and Boo Boo, the leaders of today, building the leaders of tomorrow. And I want all you young people to grow up to be good American citizens. Remember, your country needs you. Rat Fink, you're the greatest. Rat Fink and Boo Boo are coming. attempts to uh, court Mr. Lobo, the uh, female cave person, Shiga, Shiga, has been showing me some of her cave drawings. Uh, this first one is a, is a picture of Shiga, Shiga hunting down a saber-toothed tiger. Monday. Yeah, and the saber-toothed tiger says, I hate Mondays. Monday. <laughs> That's very witty. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is a picture that Shiga did of a bison making poopy making poopy poopies. that's right poopy poopy okay very funny let's let's look at the next one yes poopy yes let's look at the next one now this is an interesting one someone is watching mr lobo on tv but see i thought maybe it was mr game and watch but really you know you look at this guy it looks like a semicolon and a letter p but he's really just winking and sticking his tongue out lol Lo lol. lol. Th th that means I am laughing out loud in caveman. Lol. Quite interesting. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, this is, oh, this is a really complicated one. This is a flow chart explaining uh, how, uh, uh, explaining the, 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 the relationship between nepotism, nepotism and Arch Hall's career. Uh, this is Arch Hall uh, <gasps> a Senior and Arch Hall Jr. Now Arch Hall Jr. put his son in tonight's film, Ega, and directed it under the name Shiga. Nicholas Merriweather. And he also starred in it with his son as his girlfriend's father uh, under the name William uh, waters so and, and then there's some cousins in there too and ba basically everyone in this movie is related to Arch Hall in some way except for Richard Keel we're, we're still figuring it all out uh, it's not written in stone you know she got in her own crude backward way is just like Mr. Lobo she hosts pictures that's right watch it and 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 uh, a thousand years from now these crude cave drawings will still be around, whereas tonight's picture, tonight's picture, Ega, will have long since turned to dust. Yeah. Future looks bright, doesn't it? Give me, give me that. Take it.
think how lonely he must be. I know whatever he is, he's a human being. How were you? Because you're well, a pretty big guy. I thought I was 6'3 <laughs> until I sat over here. But. Uh of Shiva, Princess of Power, on USA Today at 11.30, 10.30 Central. It's the amazing Jinsei knife, the sharpest knife ever made. Its serrated edge is made of an unbreakable space-age material that never rusts and never needs sharpening. It can cut through the rock-hard scales of a Chinese alligator and still go through a tomato like this. Try that with your old rusty junk drawer shank. Forget it, it's so dull you won't even break the skin. How much would you pay for the culinary secret weapon used by world-famous chefs and food-making professionals? Similar knives sold at trade shows go for almost $30. But wait, there's more. You'll also get the Chinsei Kitchen Utility Knife. Watch how it melts through these police-issue handcuffs as easily as it cuts the cheese. Now how much would you pay? We'll even throw in a complete set of Chinsei Steak Knives. You'll also get this lovely Chinsei Perry Knife, the Chinsei Butter Knife, and our patented Fish Scaler. If you order now through this special TV offer, we'll double your order. That's right, you get two original Chinsei knives, two kitchen utility knives, 16 steak knives, two paring knives, two butter knives, and two fish scalers. Everything you see here is valued over $300. But you get it all for not $79, not $49, not $29, but for the amazing low price of just $129.99 plus shipping and handling. Plus, if you call within the next 20 minutes, we'll give you this handy pocket meal wrangler absolutely free as our gift to you. This offer is not available in stores, so order your amazing Chinsei kitchen cutlery system now. I said now, damn it! Kids, are you getting enough minerals in your diet? Well, in tonight's snack bar segment, Mr. Lobo is going to show you how to make rockin' sulfur pit punch based on that magical elixir that somehow sustains a race of prehistoric cave giants in tonight's motion picture, Iga. Ega. Iga. Anyway, <clears throat> all you need is a bowl like this one, some ginger ale soda like this here, 
some rainbow sherbet or orange sherbet or sherb sherbet? Sherbet, anyway. Some of this. And a container of dry ice. Now, the first thing that you do is you take the orange sherbet, uh, rainbow or orange sherbet, uh, serp, serbet? sherbet, 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 anyway. You take this, and we don't have an ice cream scoop, but who needs it anyway? Because we're cavemen, right? So you just get right in there, and you put that stuff right in the bowl with your fingers. Just get it all in there. There, mmm, that looks lovely. Then you get into your dry ice. Get a big block of it, jam it in there. And you take the ginger ale, creating a rising steam coming over the rising steam. There we go. Rising smoke effect that has been overused by special effects masters and horror hosts for eons, but it's still kind of interesting if you're right there with it in person. Trust me. Anyway, you stir in the sherbet or sherbet. until it creates a goopy, foamy mess that looks like something out of an elementary school science project. There you go. Isn't that great? Now, I like to serve it. Serve it? Sh serve it. Serve it? Serve it. Serve. Anyway, I like to serve it in a dirty cup and drop in a couple of rotten Easter eggs for that genuine, genuine sulfury taste and aftertaste. Mmm. Mmm. Just like San Jose tap water. <clears throat> e got good. Why don't you um, pour yourself a stone cold one right now during tonight's intermission? Yeah. <laughs> it's intermission time, folks. And that means it's time for a tasty snack. How about a stroll over to the refreshment counter for a delicious bite to eat? You don't have to worry about missing any part of the show because our announcer will let you know three minutes before the show starts again. See you over at the refreshment counter. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hi, I'm Chili Dilly, the person at the pickle. Packed in a jar for the freshest flavor. Served cold in a sack for you to savor. So dainty to eat, no muss, no fuss. An ideal snack for all of us. Crisp, tender, and tasty with a bit of spice. Buy one now. Taste how nice. Snack bar clerks will knock themselves silly. Speeding your order for a real chilly dilly. What's your pleasure, sir or madam, and all you kiddies, too? Sandwiches, freshly made from quality ingredients, soft drinks, cool, tangy, and refreshing. A hot dog? There you are, tender, juicy, done to a turn with some fixings. Hamburgers, ma'am? Just the way you like them. Meaty, moist, and broiled. Well, here we are back in a cave on the banks of the Dordogne River in France, thousands of years ago. And there's uh, plenty of hair, as you can see, on the gentleman, but uh, no hat and no hairdo to speak of. 
that hare is really interfering with his business. Nearby, the cave woman, his wife, is grilling a fish over an open fire. Now, the caveman is very plainly bothered by that hare that is growing so plentifully on his head in all directions. Suddenly, he looks over toward the fireplace and he sees the surviving backbone of a fish that has been eaten. And it gives him an idea. Now, I don't say that we have proof that this happened, but it could have happened, and some such original discovery must have been made. Now, see what he does with the backbone of that fish. Puts up his hair as best he can and uses the backbone, or part of it, as a side comb to hold it in place. Let's imagine, at least, that that was the first hairdo. You're not dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. You're watching cinema, insomnia. The name written in blood, Ega. Ega. Wow. You do that good. The, it was supposed to be the name written in blood, a scary, horrific horror movie. And, um, you know, it was a $27,000 movie. And so some of us actors decided that maybe it would work better if it had a little humor. And so it became, instead of Ega, the name written in blood, it was Ega, the lovesick giant. Because I play this prehistoric caveman who happens to still live near Palm Springs and a little gal with a sports car almost runs into me because I'm out searching for food and you got a rabbit and I I see this woman for the first time and she's got like really really uh, beautiful and uh, yes she and, has really yeah, really yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and she smells good yeah you know? nothing like a rabbit yeah you know? it was um, um, a big hit at the drive-ins back then because there were a lot of uh, you know, B movies and C movies and D plus movies and uh, um, you know that was kind of the thing that was the the rage then. And uh, that movie made that producer enough money to make about another six or seven movies uh, after that. Could you tell us a little bit about the direction in that movie? Well, you know, he uh, he was an r- old radio actor that had become a a movie actor, did a lot of westerns and. Uh, so it was, it was kind of left up to us to direct ourselves. And uh, uh, so there was, you know, I would come up with an idea like uh, Egos coming into town looking for the girl that smells good. And he runs and into, who isn't? He runs into a, a shop with mannequins. And so I, I have him like go up through the glass and it's like a pantomime type thing. You know, and he's looking, he's interested in this mannequin but he can't get through the glass and we discover that he's not just a predator he's a human being with uh, emotions and feelings and i I don't know about a human being but but he but he has human characteristics human characteristics frustration well thank you uh, richard keel for sharing some of your human characteristics with us just don't hurt me oh oh god oh Oh. all right well this is mr lobo are you okay okay? Uh, i'm going to uh uh I'm going to be blacking out in a few seconds here. So, um, uh, but thank you very much, Richard. Oh my, oh, oh my God, I can taste my brain. Oh, oh. Well, it's been very nice. See you later. You're not dreaming. You're watching cinema, insomnia. Oh, this? Well, uh, Mr. Lobo broke his collarbone. It's a long story. It's anthropology stuff. As you know, a uh, large female cave person has uh, set her sights on, uh, well, set her biological weed whacker on deflowering Mr. Lobo. Um, She's been trying to win me over with uh, little tidbits she's hunted and gathered including a copy of uh, this sort of book. It's called Cult Flicks and Trash Flicks, which must be some sort of 
I don't know, primitive version of the John Stanley Creature Features movie guide. Let's see what it says about tonight's feature, Ega. Ega. Large man or giant causing disturbance. Crackles on the police radio in this infamous Arch Hall epic set in Palm Springs. Ega, a desert-dwelling caveman holdover, complete with alley-oop wooden club, falls hard for Roxy, a typical 60s teen queen, uh, with Hall as her jealous, guitar-strumming boyfriend. Dig that rock and roll soundtrack, preferably with a shovel. Towering Richard Keel went on to do better things with outsized roles like Jaws in the James Bond adventures. But any Jaws you hear will be uh, yours hitting the floor uh, as you watch Ega and he's striding entertainingly from peak to peak of ineptitude. Video cassette is hosted uncut by Elvira. You know, there's a Cinema Insomnia DVD too for your information. Well, looks like prehistory is about to repeat itself. Again. <clears throat> Let's hope Arch Hall is wearing his electric guitar when he uh, jumps back into that swimming pool in the second half of tonight's feature, Ega. <laughs> That's the word he says most of the time. Ega. Oh, Dad, no. That's all I need now is a good drink of milk. Ooh, I don't see how anybody could drink that world of stuff. I guess it can't hurt me. Uh, make it last as long as you can. He won't hurt you if you're doing something. A prehistoric gentleman, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Well, here's to you. <laughs> this water doesn't make you strong. You have to be strong to drink in the first place. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm still thirsty. <laughs> Thank you. What is it? Believe it or not, Dad, I'm going to look at his etching. Oh, this is nice. No, no, no. This is nice. Let's see what you mean. Dad! What is it? Look at this drawing. It's me in my car. to keep him busy. I know. And it's not so bad, as a matter of fact. A little bitter. But it seems to have a certain quality that's good for you. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the sulfur in these walls isn't what's kept these giants alive all these years. You mean these giants have always been here? Where have you seen those before? In that cave in France. Exactly. Sure. Same style, same everything. Definitely prehistoric. Yes, I'd say that he and his tribe have always been here. Are there others? No, he's the last one. How can you be sure? 
I took a good look at his family. From the condition of the shrouds, I'd say the last one died 50, 100 years ago. How old does that make him? Oh, I would be no guess. business name. Spread the stunts out every place. Make it tough to win the race. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Wind the timer, run and take. The stunt that says, be a snake. It's great, monkey's uncle. Time is going tick, tick, tick. Do a rooster who is sick. cock a doodle choo. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Hurry, hurry, do those tricks. For the monkey's out of ticks. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Time. Now's your turn to show your speed. Do more stunts and take the lead. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Catch a fish and give a toot. Be an owl who cries. Ooh, ooh. It's fun, monkey's uncle. Time. Wiggle, waddle, quick, quick, quick. Do the build a tower trick. Twelve stunts, just three tries. Case of ties in monkey's eyes. And you're a monkey's uncle. It's wild. Complete with stunt mats, cards, horns, clickers, tricks, spinner, and monkey timer. From Transagram, where the fun comes from. <laughs> Once a normal, voluptuously beautiful woman, she drove into a nightmare of horror and saw descending from the sky a titanic monster whose fearsome touch became a frightful curse. Tonight's lucky real seven girl is not so lucky. When we gave her directions to the television station, we forgot to inform her that we're being held hostage by a giant cave woman. <clears throat> In fact, I'm standing on a ladder. Um, so by default, uh, Sally Oop over here is tonight's uh, lucky real seven girl. And of course, we'll be able to introduce uh, the next reel of tonight's film and hopefully boost our ratings with males 18 to 34 years of age. Uh, tell us a little something about yourself, Lucky Real 7 Girl. Good enough. Now back to the movie. Go see if the rock's in place. 
place. He's gone. Now's our chance. It's there. What are we going oh. to do? What can I do? Help me back. I gotta sit down. No, no. Don't touch it. It's got to be tied up or something, doesn't it? There's some aspirin in my beer bag. I don't see it. He brought it here. Must be around someplace. Keep looking. You probably hid it somewhere. Oh, here it is. The aspirin's in that small pocket. <coughs> Give me a two. Drink a lot of water. It'll give you strength. It won't knit bones, honey. It's got to be tied up with something, doesn't it? No, it feels pretty good now. Liar. That's no way to talk to your father. The trouble with you is I spoiled you. You sure did. <laughs> what can I do? Nothing. I'll just sit here. How about if I washed your face? Or gave you a shave. It'll make you feel better. You've got all your junk here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh-huh. Now I suppose he wants a shave. Good. Give it to him. Anything to please the customer. Try these. him with that shaving bone. Shiga is um, paying tribute to the porcelain god right now. Of course, we're still stuck here. She moved a big rock in front of the exit, so there's no way we can escape. Perhaps we can uh, raise our spirits a bit with a little of the old insomniac mail sack. Ugh, there we go. Letter goes like this. Dear Mr. Lobo, I love your show. I would love a cinema insomnia decoder ring so I can decode all those messages at the end of the show. Are they back in stock? Just wonder ring, LOL. Dan. Wow, Dan. You uh, sprecken the cave man. Very good. Uh, well, the cinema insomnia rings are back in stock and they're available uh, through our website, cinemainsomnia.com, and our fan club, The Sleepless Nights of Insomnia. But you don't need to worry about that because Mr. Lobo is going to send you one absolutely free along with a Cinema Insomnia t-shirt or your wonderful letter. <laughs> Incredible chicks. I am not a chick. I'm an ethno historian with a doctorate in cultural anthropology. Got that? Yes, doctor. And one hell of a guy. Ah! Ah! In search of a cannibal tribe. I want to make contact with piranha women. There are a thousand piranha women in this temple. And I bet you your terrific cook. Something around here smells fabulous. I want meat. Is it one of those beef substitutes? You want to eat me, don't you? Ah! Have they told you how great you look in that dress? Because that, see, it's feminine and feminist. Jerk. No! Kill him. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my God, you're marinating me. That's just stuff is really good. Women today are just not the way I thought they'd be. Shannon Tweed, star of Hot Dog, the movie. And Steel Justice. Adrian Barbeau, star of Escape from New York and Swamp Thing. Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. I say, this is a nasty situation, what? Quite all right, old fellow. Chin up and all that. Carry on. I'm Chiquita Banana, and I've come to say that you really shouldn't treat a fellow man this way. If you like to be refined and civilized, your eating habits really ought to be revised. Suppose I show you by making banana scallops. Take a yellow banana, or even one tipped with green. Cut the banana in pieces about this size. 
After dipping them in egg, drain and roll in cornflake crumbs or bread crumbs. Fry about two minutes until brown and tender. Then drain them well and serve hot. So. I'd like to say banana scallops taste to me like very cultured eating. So won't you join me, please, old fellow? For this time I am treating. Oh, yes, yes, yes. When Mr. Lobo is stressed, I like to shave myself. Mm. Oh, uh-oh. Oh. She got interested. Hi. <gasps> I, I'm, I'm shaving, see? Yeah, you know, some of our women shave. Would that be a distraction that would get your attention off of Mr. Lobo? Oh dear. And now back to uh, Welcome Home Roxy Carmichael meets They Might Be Giants. Tonight's <laughs> film, Egad. I mean, Ega. You did a better job of shaving him, Roxy. There's no way of telling how old that fellow is. Outside, run. Come on. Outside. Oh, 
I used to put tin foil in my mouth. You get stories from people who said they used to do that. Let me the tin ask you this: When you put the tin foil on, in your mouth, did you get radio? I, I yeah, did. Yes, like that. that's when I heard the voices that told me to kill those 17 people today. Yeah, yeah, it, it'll do it to you. you know? Look, then run for your life. Incredible is the word for the world's first monster musical. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies. From the innocence of music and laughter comes the twilight of terror. Along the midway, scantily clad dancers luring the young lovers into the sideshows. I really know that something evil lies ahead for me. An unspeakable pit of dismal subhuman monsters who drool and gibber, moaning for the thrill of revenge. Incredible are the songs, the gaiety, the zombie stomp of those who will stop living. Then the mix-up, trickery, and the device to ruin. Obey. Who is the woman branded in birth wearing the ward of horror? Do as Madame Estrella said. The world's first monster musical. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies. wanted a Bud Light. Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. I'll go get pizza. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else, you just don't want it. <laughs> Mr. Lobo is unwittingly stuck in an ancient mating ritual of the prehistoric candy striped nurse tribe. Oh, yes, they did it. have candy striped nurses in those days. It says so in Ron Jeremy's Bible. Bible. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I don't think Mr. Lobo's going to be able to scrape out of this one. I think Mr. Lobo will end up being <sighs> damaged goods by the end of the night. I, I really don't want you to see what's going to be happening to me next. Good afternoon. 
The doom buggy, just down the canyon. I can do it. Go on. Okay, he's waiting for us.
after lengthy famputations, I, Famputer, have decided the fate of the men. Famputer sentences them to death! <laughs> By Snoo Snoo! Yeah! yeah. It's the exciting new Daredevil Trick Track with the incredible Dolphin Racer, gear-driven for longer battery life. Daredevil Trick Track, full of fantastic tricks. A sensational new steering track. A wall of logs. A teeter-totter. And it's up, 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 and over we go! A somersault flip. And now, straight through a fly-apart house. Get Daredevil Trick Track, action-packed with tricks and tracks. It's thrilling, spilling, crashing, smashing. Daredevil Trick Track from Transogram, where the fun comes from. Wow! <laughs> she looks lovely lying there, doesn't she? I painted her myself. <laughs> Whenever there's a party and all the chicks are there, I ain't the kind of fella just to stand around and stare. Cause I believe in action, my soul is pleasure bent. And though I dig the chick, I pick it's never permanent. Oh, I cut in. Specialty of that. And cut out. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. He really do. Oh, there's never been a like me, care about yeah, yeah. You can say that again. Oh, ah! early, early rise and see. I never missed an opportunity. So I cut in, and I cut up, and cut out. Greetings, programs. If you'd like more information about any of the films we've shown on cinema, insomnia, or would like a transcript of tonight's program, or perhaps you'd even like some fan information or a photo of Mr. Lobo to place in your scrapbook, well, some computers in your town are equipped to send and receive electronic messages via the global information grid. If your town has one of these, you can punch us up at cinemainsomnia.com. And if you can't spell all of that, and judging by where you live, that's understandable, you'll find a link to cinemainsomnia.com on fal.net. That's F-A-L dot net. End of line. Young lady, that happens to be one of my favorite ties. But the color. You gave it to me four years ago. <gasps> oh. Why, it's lovely. Are you sure you're feeling well enough to go out tonight? Honey, we've got to go out. Well, it's not anything special. It's just a party. Your whole gang will be there. Yeah. You can't avoid them forever. No. Some of them laugh a little. Well, if I know Agnes Henderson, she'll laugh a lot.
What will happen to him? I don't know, but I'm certain we're doing the right thing. If we were to reveal that a giant actually exists, there'd be a whole army out there tracking him down like an animal. No, they wouldn't. We wouldn't let them. Honey, he's from another age, another eon. Come in. Hello, Mr. Miller. Hello, Tom. Wow, D. Wow, wow. You sure look swell, Roxy. Thank you. I'll only be a minute. Is something wrong, Mr. Miller? We're just talking about our little adventure. Oh, I see. You do? Well, sure. A girl like Roxy don't get over a thing like that right away. Doesn't. That's what I say. She's got to get her mind off it. And this hop tonight will help. Hop? Huh? Yeah, my combo's going to be there. And they swing. So I understand. I'm ready. Well, let's split then. Uh, Mr. Miller, I got my dad's wheels tonight. Really? Do they fit on your car? You're funny, Mr. Miller. Real funny. Grrr. Things happen according to 
Mexico. You turn to the left at the sign of the toe, to the empty old house on the Brownville Road. The old rock house on the Brownville Road. A crazy thing's happened according to the code. The code of the ghost at the sign of the toe. Nobody lives on the Brownville Road. They scream in this way and they bring in the day and the winds sound make you shiver. They dance and they sing through the wild river and the noise goes down to the river. You see, nobody lives on the ground. I don't blame you in the least. Oh, it's you, Dad. Nobody lives on the Brownsville Road. Like nobody lives there, dig? Not every great movie or great arcade game makes a great home video game. That's why when Mattel Electronics turned Tron into Tron Home Video Games, we made sure the excitement of Tron gameplay found its way into your home. You'll know it the moment you square off against a recognizer, if you last that long. Four great Tron games, two for Intellivision, two for Atari 2600. From Mattel Electronics, games as good as we say they are, maybe better. The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. Wet. And sloppy. Caveman. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs a leader. A toque will be the leader of the Stone Age. He will teach man to walk erect. He will discover fire. He will invent roast chicken. And fried eggs. Sunny side up. He will inspire the men and zug zug the women. Caveman. They don't call it the Stone Age for nothing. Look, Shiga. Shiga. <laughs> I'm not much for the club scene, but I kind of see where this is going, all right? Uh, <clears throat> I know that Richard Keeler, that off-the-shoulder uh, loincloth, got you all worked up. And, um, you know, you, you, biology is destiny. That's what I say. And, and uh, <clears throat> look, if, if this is way, the way it's going to go, that's the way it's going to go. So just, just have, have me as you will. You know, just do with me what you want. Just do it quickly before the conclusion of EGA. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. But perhaps we should be a little more discreet about it. What on earth are you talking about? Getting as far away as possible from that music. It's a good idea, but we guess here. No, the music's wonderful. I could listen to Tom sing by the hour. And you have. I just wanted some fresh air, that's all. Is it, honey? No. Dad, I've got the funniest feeling. What is it? 
I can't describe it, but I just know something's happened to him. Him? Ega, the giant, or whatever he is. Something's happened to him. Roxy, look at me. I love you very much. You're more like your mother every day. Every living thing was her personal concern, and she worried about them. That's just it, Dad. But just see, worry isn't the feeling that I have. I don't know what it is. He's a creature. Well, you just have to look at him to see that. He even tried to kill us. But yet... You can't get him out of your mind. somebody else. Maybe him, huh? Hey! Where you been? I was belting out a tune just for you in there. I look up and you're gone. We could hear every word, Tom. I said hear, not understand. You're funny, Mr. Miller. Really funny. Come on, Roxy, let's dance. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I thought I heard sirens. Oh, uh, that's Dino's sax. It leaks.
Knock it off. She's my girl. I'm gonna smash.